and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is Adroni Dringilate. Welcome, Adroni. Hello. Fantastic to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Tell us about you and your work. Uh, so, my name is Adroni Dringilate. I'm based in Vilnius in Lithuania, a little bit uh, in the north of Europe, uh, close to the Baltic Sea. Uh, so my main position is, uh, job position is creative director at Emco. So Emco is that place where simply smart design meets its seekers and creators. So we're like bridging designers with business. Uh, also my background is industrial design and my master was, uh, cultural management and policy. So it's like a little bit mixed, uh, uh, competences. Also, I had been working as executive director of Lithuanian Design Forum. Uh, it's like a design business association, which is uh, bridging designers with enterprises. Uh, so I was the main organizer of the local design week, which is happening in six cities at the same time every uh, every May before before the COVID. And uh, it was happening for more than a decade, so, so it's, it's a quite unique event. Also, I was uh, the main organizer of National Design Award and curated some exhibitions in France, Israel, Germany, Sweden, uh, UK, Hungary, and some other cities and countries. So basically, that's, that's all what I did, and I'm also chairing a few boards. Uh, and currently started to work a bit as a visiting lecturer at Vilnius Academy of Arts. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's, that's, that's a lot of stuff. So you're, you're matching students to, to industry, yeah? Uh, yeah, that was the main idea because uh, honestly, I had never had a particular ambition to work as a professor to, to work at the academy. Uh, but then uh, the faculty, uh, Lewis Academy of Arts faculty in Telshi, uh, which is like a quite small city in the northwest of Lithuania, uh, so somehow they managed to domesticate me uh, because I knew the dean for several years because we were organizing Design Week Lithuania uh, for more than five years. Uh, so he just called me and said that maybe he would like to come to, to become uh, a member of the graduation projects jury. So then I started uh, just to visit them, give a lecture just without any, any particular timeline. And I was really surprised how people there, uh, how dedicated they are, because I remember my first uh, lecture when I came and I came like uh, half an hour in advance and everybody were sitting at the auditorium and waiting and even some professors came. So I realized that uh, it seems it's important for them because um, uh, these people sometimes, you know, when they are living not in the capital, so it's definitely harder to attract uh, visiting lecturers it's harder to attract some uh, international uh, events and so on but uh, what I really like that people there are really down to earth you can't say that they're having very extremely high ambitious or arrogance and uh, they're always like uh, working as much as they can they're really hard working people at the same time they're very dedicated and open-minded so that that's what I really liked and that's how I started to to uh, give lectures there because I saw that they are lacking some uh, particular, let's say, uh, particular information. And every time when I'm preparing for a lecture, I'm trying to think uh, what kind of information would be useful for students. If when I was their age, what kind of uh, advices I would like to get. So because I'm I'm not a theoretical uh, person, I'm a more practitioner. So, uh, so it's, it's just a pleasure to share experience and just to broaden horizons and enhance their knowledge. Fantastic. What is the topic you're teaching? Uh, so I'm teaching uh, design management and marketing, mm -hmm. which is basically connected with my current job. And, uh, you know, because working as creative director, so it's usually uh, always balancing between uh, management and creativity because you know creative director is usually that person at the company who's always complaining wanting more colors more models uh always uh, a little bit uh, advocate uh, working as an advocate for uh, for uh designers so at the same time you always need to be uh, up to date to the current trends also to deal well with the management team because you know creative director becomes crazy and uh 
has to be collection and everything starts to go down. So, so the management always need to stop you in the right position. So there's always that balance between, uh, between uh, needs, capabilities, uh, budgets, and so on. So that's what I'm teaching students and giving some advices about uh, some prices calculations, how to be uh, up to date to current trends. Uh, also, what kind of international events are happening? Because I do believe that it's really important uh, to understand the global ecosystem because uh, quite often designers are uh, believing that they can work uh, very individually. But uh, usually I think it's very important to understand that uh, you're a part of the national ecosystem and also uh, you should know what kind of events are happening, uh, what kind of policy things are going on. You should be active in your local community uh, work closely with the associations because we don't have such a strong uh, tradition of uh, being the members of, of associations. So usually it's like uh, people are getting more and more passive. So I'm also trying to boost their enthusiasm that they would like to make a change. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. What is the project you're working on right now? Oh, I'm currently working on several projects. So at my uh, at my current job at Amco, we're developing the new collection, uh, which was we we're supposed to present at Maison Objet in Paris uh, this September. So we will see what we manage, or we will need to look for some other place. Also, I'm um, chairing the Lithuanian Design Council, which is the uh, advisory board for the ministers of culture and the minister of uh, economy. So there's a really nice team of people and with them we're working a little bit on national design policy, trying to find uh, uh, what is lacking, trying to identify the currently missing, uh, currently missing list of priority events. Also started a new topic because the, this council is pretty new thing. It was established uh, just a year ago. So we're also looking for all great um, experiences for all great case studies about design education abroad uh, because uh, we just faced that our education system design education system is basically starting at the higher education level and we're really lacking design education in kindergartens and schools oh. uh, so if somebody knows uh, any good cases uh, we know some from Helsinki and uh, from Finland uh, but if you somebody knows, so maybe it's, that's also a good chance to use this podcast. So drop me a line. My contact details are are uh, visible online. So so it would be interesting to know too. Also, um, I'm still on board of Lithuanian Design Forum. So we are working on National Design Week, which is uh, postponed to September, and National Design Award, which is also postponed to September. So there are many things going on and. Uh, and hopefully there are, of course, some some other projects going in parallel. But uh, but yeah, there are things to do. I mean, it sounds very, very exciting. Stuff. You want to bring design education down to, to the kindergarten, yeah? We would like to. We're looking for good cases because we realize that uh, that basically our design education system, I do believe it's not so bad because uh, I had a chance to study a bit in France and uh, and I can can see the difference because Lithuanian design education system is based on idea uh, that students should learn to be creative. Uh, but at the same time, you kind of learn creativity without the particular skills of, uh, for example, um, academic drawing or academic painting and you need to know how to construct because just making beautiful renders uh, without a particular construction and just uh, just having something like selling the, selling the fog where you just can't identify what is the main purpose or it's, it's not the human-centered design at all. Uh, so this education system I think is quite good because uh, students are having good painting uh, sketching skills because I remember when I saw when I was in France how students are sketching from the screen and I couldn't believe that because you know it was south of France beautiful weather all these palm trees uh, beautiful architecture and you can go and sit outside and sketch whole day you know it's not snowing it's not raining on your paper uh, so I was really impressed how how sometimes people having even very good conditions to do it differently, they're not doing this. But uh, at the same time, I think we're quite good in, in education like this, in this level. But uh, 
it's not enough because if you want to raise the awareness of design, we do believe that we should look for alternatives and start uh, teaching design education, doing design education uh, from the very early age, like even kindergarten, why not? Because, you know, kids will know how to, how to defer the good design solutions from the bad ones. It's also good. Absolutely. I mean, one of the big advantages you have in your, in your system, uh, which is, I absolutely agree with, is that you begin design from art. Uh, you haven't forgotten that design be- begins uh, in art. So I would say that if you take a page from the Waldorf system and you do nothing but art and music up to the age of seven, uh, then you have a very, very good uh, foundation to build something creatively. Uh, it's usually yeah. the introduction of, uh, as Rudolf Steiner has said, of elements that, that the children are not ready for they, because they don't have they're not developed to handle uh uh, grammar, math, sciences, you know, before the age of seven. Afterwards, it's fine. Uh, but uh, if you have just arts and music until the age of seven, then you have a very good uh, foundation to build. But, but yeah, that would be fantastic to have the discussion on that. Uh, fantastic. So you, how do you see the, uh, whatever, the, the totality of your activities uh, to give us some advice for aspiring designers and people that want to get into design? Uh, I think that many people, some many people, do really believe that designers are living a very fun life. It's like never-ending parties, uh, participating at uh, beautiful exhibitions, uh, chilling, uh, traveling, visiting international fairs, and uh, basically just having fun. So I think that when you get into that, you realize that nothing comes without a, without the hard work. And there's a huge competition and designers are very often blamed for uh, like encouraging people to buy more, creating beautiful things, um, that such concepts are a little bit uh, crossing all these uh, uh, ecology, environmentally friendly topics. Uh, so I think that everybody who would like to study design, of course, uh, they should do that. Uh, and uh, I would kind of recommend to start of, start of uh, exploring what it is to find uh, some inspiring people, some inspiring projects. Also, uh, to start a, a little bit learning the classical arts at the same time, just to broaden horizons and understand. And the rest uh, can be done at the schools. And if you have a particular uh, good professionals, uh, so everything is possible. And uh, and you know there are many design stars. Of course, it's not that probably it's not that pro- profession where you can earn an uh, extremely huge amount of money, but it's definitely fun. Uh, but at the same time, um, the competition is very big. So I think there's no place for bad design nowadays, and there's no place for bad designers too. What would you say? Fantastic. What would you say to those that have already sort of graduated and are are, are uh, uh, again looking to get into into the industry well, i think that the designers profession is also quite good because uh um even if you're a graduate comparing with some other professions uh, that some people are really starving because they don't have particular skills to go to the market so designers usually when they graduate they can do many things and starting from small uh, small projects because it's not like an architecture where you need to build uh, where you need to fit many standards or where we need to gather a huge amount of, uh, of people working on the project. So I think that uh, even these who just graduated, they, they can do many things uh, and the world is open for good ideas and basically design doesn't have any borders. So it doesn't matter where you're based here in Kyrgyzstan, uh, Vilnius, Valencia or, or somewhere else. So the good ideas, they are always winning. So I would recommend just to believe in yourself just to start working and uh, be productive because one of the biggest problems when I was working at Lithuanian Design Forum, I realized that um, there are many of these uh, one day living butterflies designers who are creating uh, one fantastic project and then after that they somehow become a rock stars and forget that uh, the world is looking for more ideas. So I think it's very important for young graduates just to keep the space because when you're at this high school, uh, when you're at the university or academy, it's always very easy to 
um, keep that pace because you have uh, exam, you're, you're having exams, you're having um, some rehearsals, workshops, and then you come up with a result when you graduate. So there's a huge risk just to, to become a sleeping beauty and uh, work on your concepts for a too long time. And so I, I would really wish just to try to be productive, to get up earlier, to spend more time on creation than, than uh, just partying and celebrating the, the work. Fantastic. Uh, what is your advice about uh, and ideas about education? And, and if there's something we could try to do or uh, do differently or add, do you have something to say on that? I think it depends on the school because uh, mm-hmm. what I can see that there are different design uh, education traditions in different countries. For example, what uh, Eindhoven Design Academy is doing, like uh, preparing the designers with a more conceptual uh, approach. Uh, like some other schools are focusing on more uh, technical skills, going back to to some crafts. So uh, I think students should find the right way where to uh, should find the right institution, the right place where they can uh, make these skills uh, to start blossoming. And my advice would probably would be for education that. Uh, as much as uh, universities should be uh, based on theoretical skills, but design is that one where practitioners are really, really making a difference. And um, I even remember myself when I was studying, so it was always very interesting to see people who are coming from the industry and who are sharing ideas, because usually these people are coming not for the salary and they have their own jobs and basically salaries in education sometimes are, are not so high or motivating, but uh, these people are coming to share the knowledge. So I would recommend for uh, design education uh, institutions just to have a good combination. Of course, all professionals will start to teach students. So I think we will end up with a bit chaotic, uh, chaotic approach, but uh, I do believe that there's a the right place and uh, the right time uh, for, for such things. So there's always many ways for improvement. And I think it depends on the school, but uh, everybody wants to do the best uh, on the capabilities they have. How can our viewers and listeners find you? Oh, I'm that one person who's not very visible on social media. So um, I'm still quite old fashioned and using my phone and email. So if you will Google, you will find my, my phone and uh, contact details. So I'm that one who's having LinkedIn. So uh, so you can always contact me via LinkedIn and I will definitely answer if you have any questions or if you have any uh, good ideas for me or some uh, some critique too. So, yeah. Or you can find me in some design events too. Yes. Uh, yes. Or at the academy during the lecture. So there are many ways too. Or just having a coffee in the middle of the street in, in Vilnius. Any, any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Uh, probably, I don't know, we discussed many things. So my decisions in life is based, I think, on education. And I'm talking about education in the global, global context. So when everything is based on education and experience, so I would like to wish for everybody, for all professors who are spending their days at the universities, uh, just never lose their optimism. Uh, always to bridge these young people with the uh, with the daily life, and also to to enhance their knowledge, to broaden horizons, and uh, at the same time continue doing this uh, very important job. Fantastic, fantastic! And we would love to see you on Design Education uh, Valencia Design Education Forum 2020. Uh, we'll try. It's always a pleasure to come to Valencia. The last time when I've been, so I remember. Uh, very wonderful architecture, friendly people, and uh, very late dinners. Uh, that was definitely too late for me and fantastic food. So why not? Who knows? Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk.